So um, let's start off with a word of prayer and we'll get started. So Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are um, the Lord of peace. That's what your word tells us. And so Lord, uh, we come to you honestly and say we need an extra understanding of your peace. Uh, we need a, a deeper uh, understanding of how, how to move through these times. And so Lord, we just decree and declare increase in wisdom and understanding and increase in shalom uh, and an increase in um, our uh, dependence on you. So Lord, forgive us for any sins that we may have committed today by thought, word, or deed. Give us the grace to release and forgive others in the name of Jesus. For you are uh, our living word. And so Lord, we just ask that you would shield us from the wiles of the evil one who would try to whisper in our ears uh, discomfort and dis-ease in our times. Uh, so Lord, we cling to you, we love you, we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 So um, every week you'll get a little handout, like Larry said, uh, and um, we also are starting this year uh, to have a class pledge. It's a class creed, I like to call it. Can everybody get a copy of this? It's right there. Yeah, there you go. You. Okay, awesome. Did everybody get one of these? And it's just a way to, here we go, to um, talk to one another and just start off all on the same page. The Bible says when the people are in one accord, um, more happens, right? Uh, in the right. kingdom. So um, we'll start each sentence with I will and we'll just say it together. You ready? Yeah. I will. Be punctual. I will be respectful. I will be diligent. I will be excited. Flexible. Flexible. Sorry. I'm too excited. You were excited. I was excited. I will be excited. And I will be excited. Well, thank you very much. So as we enter in here, so um, if you'll look on um, the page three, you'll see basically the outline for the class. Just six weeks of um, going through these things. Some of the things the pastor has been preaching on, and we'll have a little more opportunity to go a little more in depth in the class, uh, and also to explore um, how we can apply concepts of shalom and peace in our daily lives. So, did anybody, what were your expectations? Why, why did you come tonight? Just anybody that feels led to share that. What, what was your... Um, I, I came because, um, uh, not just the thing, there's a lot of chaos, of course, in the world, mm -hmm. but um, I've been just losing a lot of friends to cancer, very mm -hmm. close friends, um, and um, taking care of my niece sometimes, things can just seem and feel overwhelming. And so as I was going down a list and I saw the word chaos, I thought, I thought, I need to be there. <laughs> so. Well, good. Well, that, that's a good reason. That's a good reason. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? My, my reason is just it's a little different. I live right here close to the boundary. And to get to church uh, is difficult. Mm -hmm. The traffic, I leave from 6 to I get there at 8. Right. Mm -hmm. construction at 290. So when I saw that, <gasps> this is right in my neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you found us! Come on in! Come on in! Hey, come on in! Hello. How are you doing? Great. So, um, introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Cynthia Gay. And I'm Virgil Gay. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. We're just kind of going around, and, and, and if you're willing to share um, what brought you here tonight. So, we live close, and y'all live close. She said we live close, and we okay. always want to go to Wednesday Bible study. Mm -hmm. But it's um, so much traffic and the chaos of 290. Yes, mm -hmm. and the Beltway and all this. And the Beltway. Stuff. Yeah. Excellent. So we were happy to hear about this. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. And y'all? Do y'all live around here? We do. We live in Cypress area. Okay. And we just, we've been members of Windsor Village for years, and we're just excited to have Opportunity close to home. <laughs> For Bible study. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I, I also live very close here, so this is a good thing. So um, I want to start us off again looking at page three. Um, and these are the topics that we're going to cover. 
So tonight's just going to be basically kind of maybe a little bit of a rehash about what Pastor has been talking about and doing some definitions and spend some time praying together. That's tonight. Next week we'll deal with a little more about who is the God of peace. Okay, so, so what is, how does God operate in the world? How can we as part of the body of Christ, sisters and brothers, um, be a part of his process? Yeah. Uh, and then the third week um, is to just explore the reality is we are created for peace. I don't think people really realize that humans were created to be ambassadors of peace in the world. Not just to survive, but to actually be ambassadors for peace. So that, that's kind of a new way of thinking about what our jobs are, right? Um, and then the fourth and fifth week We'll really get down to the nitty gritty. How do, okay, then how do I live in peace? How, how do we make this work, right? And then the sixth week is then how do we now take that out to the world? More of a missional idea. You know, what is our mission in the world as a church? Okay. So um, let's just dive right in. If you look at page five on your handout. So ask the basic question, what is peace? So based on um, the sermons that Pastor's been preaching the past couple of weeks, uh, what is his understanding of what are you learning is the definition of peace? I mean, there's no wrong answers. Just <laughs> whatever you want to You're going to get no grades. Okay. I'm not going to report back to pastor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a level of where you find yourself uh, being okay with, with what's going on where you are in your personal life, professional life, uh, your spiritual life. I think the um, I think I think that's what it is. I think it's peace. I think it's it's something good that we should find ourselves um, in a common place with peace. Mm -hmm. okay. so always anxious and searching and unknowing and mm -hmm. good. Good, good. Somebody else. But uh, a level of relaxation where your mind, your body, and your soul are just calm. Mm -hmm. um, you're able to rein in your thoughts and not have them scatter. Because during the day, I think, are a lot. You're, you're, you're trying to do so many things, mm -hmm. and so many things are just working on your mind, and you're thinking ahead and thinking back. And right. It's just hard. You, know, you can drive down the street and before you know it, you've driven somewhere that you used to go, but that's not where you really were going. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh my God. <laughs> how did I get here? How did I get here? Right. So what's the, the old spiritual? I, I woke up this morning with my mind, what? Stay Stay on stayed on Jesus. Stayed on Jesus. And sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, yeah. you know, is to keep your mind anchored. Stayed. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, what, what have you, what do you uh, experience peace to be? That past that he... He, he made it wider mm -hmm. because in my mind, like peace is just being calm and everything, but you don't really um, itemize it. He's mm -hmm. talking about medical, he's talking about finances. And you don't think of peace in those areas, but he wants you to have peace in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. So when, the, when you see the bills, you have peace because God said he's going to provide. Mm -hmm. and, and even though the numbers look big and have all these <laughs> things to do, yeah, yeah, because I said, I was like, look, I said, oh, Father, how, this is the salary. How am I going to get this down? But you need to have peace. Yeah. Because sometimes you, I'm looking for a 0% credit card. Right, right. But that's <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that yeah, gives yeah. me peace. That's yeah. right. Amen. 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 So, 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 so when he started to preach, I said, sure, look, that's just peace. But he made it so broad mm -hmm. in every area. And he identified each area and showed how we can have peace in every area of our life. Amen. Amen. Somebody else? To me, it's sort of um, like trust and faith and God, God assurance in that, like it's a big sign that says that God has said, I got this. Amen. Yeah, I'm not ignoring you. I'm actually talking to our folks online. Say, say hi to our, we have, um, hi. yeah, we have Ashley and Stacy. Hey, guys. Hi. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. So, um. It, I mean, it just uh, um, Stacy, is it okay if I share uh, what you've posted? She'll let me know here in a minute. So go ahead. Oh, Talk. I was just saying, just God saying, I've got this, no matter what the <coughs> circumstance or situation or whatever you're experiencing, you're coming against. 
God has your back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I would say it would be a, uh, really just a sort of a, a calmness of the spirit in which there is no real anticipation, or no real uh, worry about something that happened. Or right. Basically, it's really just, you just said a good place. It's really beyond just, it's really a spiritual calmness mm -hmm. in, in which you really, your spirit's not really reacting to anything. It's just, you know, it's at, 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 at ease. And, and a, not really at ease, but really just has a good, you know, positive, you know. Kind of at rest. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing, I think I'm hearing, is we're talking around contentment, mm -hmm. being at rest, being at a place of low anxiety. Um, and so let's just think about some of the definitions that are actually in the Bible. So on your sheet, I'm actually in the, over on the um, right-hand side. Basically, and pastors talked about this, there are basically two general words in the Bible for, that are translated most often as peace. Well, you know the Hebrew one, so what's the Hebrew one? Shalom. 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 Okay, and that is exactly what you were saying, sister. It is a broadness. It's not simply the absence of conflict. Because many times the absence of conflict is not where there is actually shalom. Mm -hmm. You can have conflict going all around you, but you can be in shalom in wholeness, in contentment, in actually have joy. Um, the Apostle Paul is probably one of the most obvious examples in the New Testament of someone who's in jail, <laughs> but writes the book of Philippians, writes the letter of Philippians. And we'll look at that um, what, in a couple of weeks. How can he sit there and six or seven times in the book go, Rejoice! Rejoice! You're like, is he on drugs? <laughs> you know, seriously. But no, it has to do with his inner, inner understanding of who Jesus is and how Jesus works in the world. How is Jesus at work? And so even in his chaotic situation, he's not overcome by his circumstances. So that's a good example of believing in shalom, that kind of thing. So the New Testament word is then irene. Say that. Irene. 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 And it has the same kind of idea um, of wholeness and healing um, and also of a type of, of prosperity in which you don't have to worry about whether the bills are going to get paid. Um, the New Testament actually widens it and takes in the Greek understanding. This is a, a, the classical Greek understanding because the goddess Irene is the goddess of prosperity. So the church takes on this cultural understanding of Irene and says when the church operates as it should, everyone has what they need. When the church operates as they should, there is peace. Everyone has enough to eat. Everyone has a place to live. Everybody's kids are educated. You know? um, and so again, it's mirroring the Old Testament or First Testament concept of shalom, wholeness, healing, provision. Okay? So that's very different. So if you look at the bottom of the first column um, there on the left-hand side, it says the English dictionary definition of peace is freedom from civil disorder and is linguistically more at home in the arena of warfare and treaties and negotiation rather rather than describing a path of human existence mm -hmm. it's a state exactly mm -hmm. and it really has to do with military or governmental mm -hmm. ideas pax romana <laughs> what is pax romana melinda peace of rome yeah, that was only peace if you didn't disturb the peace. If you mm. disturb the peace, they would come down on you mm. very hard. So the peace of Rome was not peaceful. But it was a military. Yeah. 
intervention into you will not do that and disturb our peace. Yeah, they would knock back anyone who disturbed the lack of, you know, the political process or the political chaos, right? So, so um, Stacy Jones, who's online, says, um, she's just sharing, she says, and she's giving me permission to share. She says, I've been feeling overwhelmed with what's been going on in the world, and I just wanted a more positive approach and a biblical approach, outlook to what's going on. So um, I think we're kind of all there, and, and this is a good place to start, right? So let's look at the group exercise there in the middle. And these are just a few little exercises, and we've got some prayers and things on the back that we'll use to, as we move a little uh, toward the end of the class. But think about this. What color for you is the most peaceful? What blue. color? Blue. blue. Okay. Somebody else? Yeah. Blue. Blue? Yeah, sky blue. Sky, sky blue. Sky blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see, for me, it's deep, kind of an almost red mahogany elicits peace for me. I think it's because, and I was thinking about this on the way over here, I think it's because my grandfather had one of those, that color of a recliner. <laughs> you know, a vinyl recliner. And I just think of him being at peace in that Same recliner, there. in that color. Mm -hmm. And then also, I think it all, like just sitting in like a, a warm, cozy living room with a fire and mm -hmm. you got these nice chairs. So that color for me is very peaceful. So blue I'm at the beach. beach. You're at the beach. Mm -hmm. at the blue sky. Mm -hmm. Anywhere yeah. outside. So that's question number three. So yeah. where is your peace? When you yeah. think of being at peace, where is that? Sitting on the couch with a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Watching your favorite show. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. You're at the beach. Anywhere in nature. Anywhere in nature. Outside mm -hmm. in nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Somebody else, where, where's your piece? Where are you located? On the swing. Really? Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. Walking in the park. Walking in the park? Which park do you go to? George Bush? Oh, no, I'm with you. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I can walk around my neighborhood. Right. And I drive about 10 minutes, which doesn't make sense. I could walk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. But it's so peaceful. And you, and you hear the wind through the trees. Mm -hmm. Right. And you see they have big, tall pine, pine trees. Yeah. Pine trees. And, and, it, and it moves from one tree to the other. And it's yeah, and so beautiful. That's really peaceful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I can send that a swimming pool. Yes, sir. I was just going to say, in, in any environment where there's really a lack of noise, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I concur with you. <laughs> <laughs> I concur. I, I'm, I'm, believe it or not, and Pastor always says it too. People don't believe he's an introvert. I also am pretty deep introvert. <laughs> and, I can't think of a more peaceful place than sitting in the stacks at Rice University Library and just sitting with those stacks of books <laughs> around me. Uh -huh. For me, that is absolute tranquility. <laughs> you know, um, and there's not a lot of noise. Um, yeah. The claustrophobia. <laughs> <laughs> So today I flew in from Dallas and I realized something about me that I'm really, I don't like a lot of noise. I'm real sensitive to sounds. And I actually had my earphones in not to listen to anything but to block out the noise at the airport. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we all, God has wired each of us differently. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so think about then, if you were to roll that, all those feelings and definitions, if you were to define peace in three words, what would they be? It doesn't have to be a sentence, just three words. I wrote happy, smiling, and the sun. Okay, <laughs> good, <laughs> good. Somebody else. 
<laughs> I'm, ta I'm talking, I'm asking them. The Lord said mine, said lack of noise. Okay, lack of noise, there you go. And my, mine is um, cozy, mm -hmm. tight, mm -hmm. um, like being swaddled, mm -hmm. tight, yes. mm -hmm. um, and um, intellectual. Mm -hmm. So those three things together kind of. Mm -hmm. I have quiet, dark, and warm. There you go. So you have some more birth imagery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Excellent. Excellent. So. If you think about this is how God has wired us, then this is how God communicates to us as well. He's going to start where we are to say, okay, yes, now bring me into this. Bring me into your picture. So if you imagine yourself in a garden, bring God into your garden. You imagine yourself on a swing, God's either pushing you or swinging with you or whatever. Mm -hmm. And bring God into those pictures. Um, and sometimes that's a good mental exercise to do as you're walking just say, you know, Thank you, Lord. Yes, absolutely. This is awesome. But wow, you're walking with me. I am not walking out here by myself. I am not in the middle of this chaos by myself. Um, I think one of the, well, it is. Uh, sociologically, we know right now that one of the greatest threats to humanity is people feel very isolated because of the technology. <coughs> people feel they can be in the same room with each other and feel very yeah. alone. Yeah. Everybody's this. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and no, the, the, the amount of human interaction and the ability to actually interact responsibly with each other has, has only increased. So the church is a place that can be an antidote to that in some ways. You know? We have the potentiality because it's based on relationships. Right? Mm -hmm. um, to address that um, as we are church in the community, wherever we are. Like, we've come here together, we're being church. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not a church service, it's not a worship experience, but we're being church. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> we are the church. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, um, let's look at a Bible passage tonight, and that's Judges 6, 23 and 24. Um, the one here says um, that for, for them, the back porch, bicycling, and quiet is their place for peace. Excellent. So let's look at Judges 6, 23 and 24. And when you find that, whoever has it, they'll read it. Per favor. 26. 26. 26. Our judges oh, 6, six. Uh, 23 and 24. Mm -hmm. This is the story of Gideon. This is in the middle of the story of Gideon. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. Mm -hmm. To this day, it is still in Ophir of Abazirites. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> up in the northern kingdom. Geographically up in the northern part of Israel. Um, so God comes to, to Gideon himself. And what do we know about Gideon? Remember your Bible story about Gideon? What, well, what, was, what was Gideon's uh, sort of distinguishing feature? What did he do? When God asked him to put together an army, what did he do? Or call him as a judge? He wanted a sign. What a sign, right? Yes. One bit must be wet and another bit So yes. we call it, you yes. know, throwing out the fleece. Yes. You may have heard that, yes. you know. Is that <laughs> I'm gonna flee, open well, a fleece out, see what the Lord said. Yes. And at some point God just said, Okay, that's enough. <laughs> I'm not, we're not gonna do more no more fleece stuff. Peace be with you. And so this is that word, what? Shalom. Shalom. Mm -hmm. Wholeness and contentment and healing and all that that entails be with you. Why? Because God is with him. And at the end of the day, he's saying to Gideon, this has to be enough. I have to be enough. 
I have to be enough. Stop it. Stop doing the testy thing. <laughs> I have to be enough in this. You either don't trust me or you're not, basically. And so Gideon says, okay, but I'm going to build an altar. This is a way of remembering that God came to him in this very pointed way. So think about it in your own life. Where can you build altars to God that will help you remember that God is with you? At work, at home. You know, it may, it may just you write out a scripture and you post it on your computer screen. Or it may be something you put on your mirror. Or it may be something that you put by your bedside so that the moment you wake up, you think, God is with me. I used to tie a string on my arm, and I had one on there almost nine years. I didn't take it Wow. Off. Mm-hmm. What did it remind you? It was just that, that God was with me, and that, uh, and basically that it was very easy and simple that it was going to be okay. Whatever mm-hmm. I was dealing with, it's just going to be okay. And I didn't have a scripture to reference it, but just for the fact mm-hmm. that I knew God, it just, just know that God was it's going to be okay. That was it. Whatever. Good. Wow. That's great. That's a great testimony. Mm-hmm. So I just want to encourage all of us to think about how we can build little altars to God in the places where we need to know God is our peace most. Um, you, know, you know, if you go to the hospital and visit a friend, <laughs> maybe you take a, a blue piece of string and go, this is to remind us yeah. that God is our peace. Mm-hmm. God is our shalom in this, in this process. Or whatever. I mean, the Lord's, you know, we're all creative. So God has given people creative ability to go, this is what you need tangibly in order to remind me that you are my peace in this moment. And that's all Gideon's doing. He just needed to be reminded. And we all do. Yeah. From time to time. <laughs> so comments or questions around that before we move into the prayer time? Yes. I'd like to say that. That's, I think that's why it's good to have a friend when you're in chaos. Because sometimes in chaos, you can't stop it or you can't maneuver it. So what I like is, I know God, but when I'm in chaos, I need that friend to come and tell me something that I know just to click it in my brain again and say, God is with you, or shalom, Mm -hmm. or whatever it is, Mm -hmm. uh, a a, a scripture. And it's like, yeah, I do know that. Mm -hmm. But thank you for coming to tell me. Thank you for coming to shake me up a little bit. Remind me of what I already know. Remind me of what I know, yeah. Well, that's, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say that makes sense, because the Gideon story, it's like, okay, make the fleece wet and the, Grass dry. Now make the grass wet and the fleece dry. dry. Mm-hmm. And he did. And then he said, "Okay, that's enough. Let's go." Right. It's almost like put on your big boy pants. Mm-hmm. I've shown you. At some point, you have to move past this. Show me. Mm-hmm. So, if God's saying at some point you have to move past that, what you said really is so valuable because that's why we have each other in the community. Yeah. God is saying, trust me, mm-hmm. we have each other to remind us of who he is. That's what the are. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, the, and, and that, that other sister or brother can help us get a perspective. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we get so wrapped up yes. in our head. Yes. It's like, oh, and you have to have somebody go, no, the yeah. world is not ending. Yeah. 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 Yes. And the interesting thing about that, you know, I can think about throughout my life in different situations. I've had different mm-hmm. friends who, you know, I had to deal with a work issue. I had a friend who could pray with me, mm-hmm. help mm-hmm. me get over the hump there. And one thing that was really, I think, eye-opening is when we lost our granddaughter. Mm-hmm. And we had a lot of, I had a lot of people that, you know, I knew kind of, but I didn't know their story. And so a lot of people that I wouldn't necessarily call friends, but somewhat acquaintances, we now are great friends, mm-hmm. they share their pain and grief to, to help us mm-hmm. get through that. And so mm-hmm. friends are great. 
Good godly friends. Mm-hmm. You know, not frenemies. <laughs> <laughs> ones who can really speak truth yeah. with love into your situation. Melinda's a good friend of my good friend, and she's able to do that. She's able to speak truth in my chaos sometimes and go, it's really not the end of the world. <laughs> you know, so. Vice versa, pulling off the ceiling. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, sometimes he sends a song. You write the woman you have on the of course. That's the uh, I like the, the KSPJ. KSPJ. That song is for yeah. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so, oh. How did y'all know? Yeah. How, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? Right. Yes. So that helps in yeah. Jesus, such peace. Mm-hmm. So it's where it's like that's you in it. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> So Lawan um, online is saying um, I, she uses computer passwords to remind me of God. Mm-hmm. Example: I'll take the sentence "Lord, uh, Lord One and Only" and create a password "Lord Number One A O Exclamation Point." Oh. I have to say the phrase every time I need my password. Oh. <laughs> That's a really good idea. That's yeah. a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, those are all. Those are all important and excellent things. So on the back, I've given us some exercises for the week. These, you can choose to do these or not. This is, this is a low impact class. Um, but this is a prayer that I ran across um, that is very interesting. <laughs> Many of us think of God as everything else but our tutor or educator. But in the earliest church, Clement of Alexandria was actually a student of the Apostle Paul. Okay? So, um, he writes this prayer in very, very early in the church to remind us that God is also our tutor. And he's a good one. He's a good teacher. Um, and he's there to aid us in our learning process. He doesn't say, you're supposed to know this all right now. So let's walk this out, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And um, we'll read this prayer in just a little bit. But then at the bottom, I've given us a little peace exercise. And it's just simply a breathing exercise. So I wanted wanted to do Mm -hmm. it and talk to you about it a little bit. Um, And and then we'll, we'll... Pray for one another and pray this on the back and uh, maybe just share a little bit more and then y'all can go on and have dinner. <laughs> so the peace practice for this week is at least twice a day. If you're, if you're in the middle of, 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 of some stress in your life, and, and, and I, at this point in life, I'm not sure who's not, um, is to twice a day, close your eyes and take three <coughs> slow, deep breaths. So let's, let's do that. Here we go. Here we go. In through the nose, out through the mouth. And scripturally, this can help us remember that God gave us the breath of life. When we breathe, it is a testimony. Every breath we take is a testimony to God's creating and recreating power. If you're breathing, you're a testimony to God's creating and recreating power. It's just something that simple. I mean, Genesis 2-7, and he gave to us the breath of life. He breathes in their nostrils, you know, man's nostrils, humanity's nostrils, the Adam's nostrils, the breath of life. And we have that. We still bear that. Um, And so something else to do that you can heighten this exercise is that as you breathe in, you actually are mindful of where it's entering your body. Like, where is the sensation of the breath? like, oh, I feel it in my chest, or I feel it in my stomach, or I feel it in wherever. And to just take note of that mentally. Just like, okay, where is that? Okay. And then as you exhale, try to find, feel where you, the sensation of exhaling is coming out of your body. 
This is um, something that the church has done for generations, the old church. This is a form of what's called breath prayer. It started in the Catholic Church uh, hundreds of years ago. Um, and it's a simple way to meditate on the creating and recreating power of God in our lives. It's real simple. So I'm just going to encourage us, if you find yourself in a stressful point, this is not related to Zen Buddhism, by the way. This has nothing to do with that. This is something that came out of the Western Church. <laughs> um, and you'll, you will find nooks, monks and nuns today who practice this very simple breath mm -hmm. prayer. This is a type of praying uh, with the breath. Mm -hmm. So um, try it. And next week, if this is something that, that works for you, let's share on how the Lord... Um, brought his creating and recreating presence and awareness into your life in those moments. So let, let's, let's try that. Um, and then, I'm just making sure what we got. Ah! She's, uh, this is Stacy. She's saying about the breath prayer. She says, funny, before you said that, I thought about God giving me breath. Where at the church can we pick up the syllabus, handouts, and worksheets? I'll post it online here in just a minute. I'll put some show notes in. Great. Um, so on the back of your sheet, you do have a bunch of other scriptures. Um, you can take time this week to look those up if that's something that's meaningful to you. Um, you may want to use these as a point of, of meditation and study for yourself. Um, and you can share that next week. So let's pray together this prayer, and then I want to spend some time with us praying for each other. Okay? Because, as you said... Having a friend, having people to pray with, just about the stuff that's concerning us, is a way to experience shalom in the moment. Well, let's pray together um, this prayer on the back. Let's take a deep breath first. <sighs> oh, eternal educator, be gracious to your children. You are our educator. Father, guide of Israel, Son and Father, both one, Lord. Give to us who follow your instruction to fulfill the likeness of your image and to see, according to our strength, the God who is both a good God and a judge who is not harsh. We ask you to give all things to us who dwell in your peace, who have been placed in your holy city, who sailed the sea of sin open and unruffled, ruffled, excuse me, that we may be made tranquil and supported by your Holy Spirit. The unutterable wisdom by night and day until the perfect day dawns to sing eternal thanksgiving to the one only father and son son and father educator and teacher with the holy spirit amen isn't that an interesting prayer and that comes from the earliest church that's a translation from the greek um and i I've been spending some time with this prayer this week, and I still have not plumbed all the depths of it. It's like, okay, I've got to read that again. Wait a minute, I've got to read that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want to encourage you, perhaps once a day you pray this this week, and see again what the Lord may do as far as turning over some places in your life that need the sunlight mm -hmm. of his peace. How can he be your tutor this week in the idea of peace and shalom? So any comments or questions before we turn to pray for one another? So what's something, one thing, one insight that you're going to go away with tonight? Just one thing. Better understanding of what peace is to me, at least. Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was going to do the um, KSBJ sticky note, mm -hmm. so I'm still going to do it. So now I'm going to relate all of my sticky notes to about 
Peace, peace. There you go. Good, good, good. excellent, excellent. Somebody else. No matter what, God is my breath of life. Amen. What this prayer says to me is, it's not my peace, it's his peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what the gift, his peace. That's good. I think the power of peace. That's excellent. The power of peace. Oh, say, say more about that. What do you mean by that? Well, I just think of everyday situations or even difficult traumatic type situation, if you're at peace, then it just makes it, I guess, so much easier to, to navigate. Mm -hmm. And we'll look a little bit at Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are the peacemakers, a little later on. So that walks right in line with that, absolutely. I mean, we have choice in a situation to either bring peace or to stir it up. Mm -hmm. And what does our world need now? Peace. People who will step in the middle of that mm -hmm. and not stir it up. And I think, because um, a big part of being at peace is forgiveness. Excellent. And yeah. also thinking about um, intention. Because I think a lot of people do things, say things, act a certain way. Right. It's really not, you can't take it personally, it's not intentional. But when you, and I think I'm a big social media person, but somebody had uh, posted that they were forgiving somebody, even though they'd never received a pop an apology or mm -hmm. whatever, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. It was a little deeper than that. But um, we have, well, they never got an apology. And it was, I can't remember the other part of it. But when you do that, and when you have to do that, and when you do it, it's your own peace that yeah, you, you can express right. something. You freeze you, you, you up. Yeah, mm -hmm. you might not get mm -hmm. what you're looking right. for, the apology right. or mm -hmm. whatever. Right, but yeah. you have to accept that your peace mm -hmm. and your forgiveness mm -hmm. is, is in you and you can move on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the ancients, people of the time of the Bible, would say that when we participate in acts of God likeness, things that are more like the image of God than those that aren't, we are actually bringing a type of healing and shalom to the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in modern Judaism, it's called tikkun olam, which means repairing the world. Mm -hmm. But this, in the, the ancients also had this idea of when I do things, when I choose to act like God and bear his image in the middle of this, that I'm actually bringing, I'm actually plowing the ground so peace can actually grow there, mm -hmm. even when I'm not there. So it's not just over once I leave. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty cool. You think about it, like, okay, you know, this is not just a drop in the ocean. This has meaning in this moment. When and you do that, Pastor, it, it does, it's like it surpasses all understanding mm -hmm. because in the middle of chaos and there's this peace in your life, how can it be? <laughs> How can I have that? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. It, it, it really can, but to surpass all understanding, there's that peace. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that verse very specifically. We'll really drill down into what, what that verse is, is, is context. So thank you. So thank you so much. I, I am looking forward to journeying with you. And please invite some other folks to come next week. Um, and so turn in groups of, of two or three and pray for one another. Um, share your needs as you feel comfortable. Pray, for, pray as you feel comfortable. And um, then after you pray for each other and with each other, you are dismissed. And we'll see you back next week. Thank you.
So for those of you online, I'm just um, going to say a quick prayer for us and um, just pray that the Lord um, will bring us peace. So let's pray. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for being our peace. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our Prince of Peace. We thank you for being the great I Am. Lord, for each person that's online, I, I just pray that... Um, they will begin to experience your peace in new new ways, uh, in deeper ways. Um, Lord, uh, may you bring peace in the chaos. May we be instruments of your peace. Uh, so Lord, forgive us uh, when we've been afraid, um, when we've uh, not uh, remembered that you're there with us. Uh, and Lord, help us to forgive those who are uh, disturbing our peace. <laughs> We just release them to you. And Lord, help us not to yield to the temptation to give in to chaos or um, uneasiness, but to, to just hear from you and depend on you. For you are our great source of peace. You are our creator, our recreator, and we love you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I will post the show notes, the syllabus, um, and um, here at the bottom. So thank you all for, for joining us, and we'll see you next week.